to go. Okay, students, uh, one of the things that we want to practice today is proper hair color application. Uh, we're doing the brush method. So what you're going to need, let's talk about this a little bit first. So we want to make sure that our mannequin is separated into four quadrants. In other words, four sections, and we already know center frontal to center nape, tip of the ear to tip of the ear, and then you section each one off. This is part of keeping your color organized. Once you get used to this, you already visualize it. So, you know, once you're experienced and do a lot more, many times we don't section. It depends on the color, depends on what we're doing. You may have to, you may not have to, it just depends. The thing that's fascinating is there is a procedure for tint going darker. A tint is a hair color from a dark blonde to black. That's considered tint. And, uh, and you also have the lighter tints, which are dark blonde, because you're still blonde, to very, very light blonde, or, or even the pastels, which are the platinums. So the dark blonde area, or the light brown, the light brown again is brown. So it, it, all of those are called tones of color. And what you're doing with hair color, for instance, this is a light brown haired mannequin. Whether you can see it like that or not, it just depends on how the camera takes it. But this would be considered a light brown between a level five and a level six. In other words, either five or six levels lighter or areas lighter than black, okay? So those are factors. When you go into the beauty supply and you see those numbers, that's what that means. So you go to the black and you figure, okay, that's come up this many levels. Certain things have, have been removed. I am planning on doing a just a theory, just a verbal class on hair color. I'm trying to set up the lesson plan because I want knowledge gained on that. I don't want it to be blah, 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 blah. And I do have formulas, specific formulas that I work with. And after a while, you don't need the formulas because it's already on top of your head. You already know what created that color. So today we're going to be talking about proper hair color application. So you have certain different ones. You have tint going darker. You have tint going lighter. The tint going lighter is not different than, um, for instance, the virgin lightener. Uh, and, and all of those are just certain names, but it's procedures and applications. It depends where you are and where you need to go on the type of application. You Today we're going to be doing the first thing we're going to do is a uh, the application now for a virgin lightener and there's certain things that you that you do that's the first one we're going to do then on another section we're going to do a retouch but there's a procedure there's certain movements certain characteristics about how we apply and then a tint going darker the thing that's fascinating on all of this is a virgin relaxer is applied exactly the same as a virgin lightener Applications identical. We have to do certain things to the hair on a relaxer because it's extremely relaxed. Relaxed hair is very curly hair. And if you, you know, certain types of hair are much tighter in the curl than other types of hair, but still the application is the same. There's certain things we have to do. We have to separate it. We have to organize it. And then we put the chemical. It is a chemical that we put on it that says, okay, hair, I'm going to beat you up and I'm going to make you straight. All right. So, with this, we're just changing the color. But chemical application or, you know, those applications are pretty much the same. It's you need to know hair structure. You need to know certain little details. And I know I'm kind of fishing off this area, but I'm giving you other information for future classes that we're going to do as well. And you'll be able to relate back to this. Um, okay, a virgin, a relaxer retouch, the same as a tint retouch. You only work, retouch means the hair that has now grown out. And it never ceases to fascinate me when I see people with really gray hair and then uh, they say that my color doesn't last long. And I want to tell them the color doesn't penetrate down to your scalp. That right away they start seeing that white line or that gray line growing out. Hair is a natural process. It grows out. 
the product doesn't go under the skin and into the papilla and into the hair bulb and into the hair cell and says, okay, now you've got to be this color. It stays on the outside, all right? So as hair grows, you're going to see it. So if you're having this problem, you need to go lighter. It's more forgiving. That's why I'm this color. It's more forgiving. So there's so many factors about hair color. Like I said, I am going to do a lecture class. It is going to be lengthy, So, but what my recommendation on that is take notes. All right, just take notes on the verbal that I'm going to give you. So um, what we're applying is we're just going to use a tube color. This is a real, this is a lighter color. It's not, now mannequins have been pre-colored, all right? When hair is pre-colored, it's not going to lift or come off or become lighter like natural hair. It has, the way that I describe it is when you have pre-colored hair, and I hope this isn't offensive, but it's like false teeth, it's not real. It looks real, but it's not real. And it's treated completely differently. So when we have pre-colored hair, the pigment inside has now been changed. It is now artificial color inside. And it becomes, the more you put on top, I call it from cement, I mean from sand to cement. It's harder to break through. So it just depends on what you're doing. I always recommend that for people that color their own hair, don't bring it out to the ends. If it's not fading, then there's a reason for that. There's a whole reason for that. So if it's not fading, don't bring it out to the end. See, I've gotten into the topic of, I'm trying to teach you application, and I'm getting into the topic of hair color. So let's just go into the application. I am going to tunnel vision this now into the application, but do watch the video. It's gonna be verbal, like I said. It's just gonna be talking. I'm gonna try and have some stuff to show you uh, to be able to talk about it a lot more, but there are a lot of formulas, and it is just yellow, red, and blue. All right, so, okay visual. I've got this tube of color. We are using a tube color on this. If you pick up a tube of color, the tubes of color have little lines on the side that tell you how many ounces and the ounce separations on them. You never squeeze a tube of color like this. That's crazy because then you're working too hard and you're literally almost losing a whole ounce in it by doing that because then you've got to totally smooth this down and bring it down. So the way that tubes of color work, and I'm gonna open one up here for you. I'm gonna open up another one. <coughs> I'm hoping that my phone doesn't ring because I just realized that I still have it attached to me. Okay, so here's a new one. <coughs> when you wanna know the level, it's at the bottom. It's a number on the bottom. So this is 4.03N. The N signifies neutral, all right? And um, like I said, we're tunnel vision on application. So um, the way that you open up your tube is you open it up and you can see that it's got a closed edge to it. Yet the lid on the very end of it has a tip, just a little sharp tip. You're gonna put this here, you're gonna press it in, and then you can then use your color. I'm not gonna do that with this one, but I've done it on the other one already because I was showing you uh, the students yesterday on how to do that. It's really nice if you can pick up one of these. Uh, they're at Sally's or, you know, uh, suppliers have them, but this helps turn the tube and you always squeeze it from the top and bring it down. You can support that squeezing, you know, once if you, if you hold it tight and turn at the same time, you're not gonna squeeze it up, you're still gonna squeeze it out. That's the whole thing behind it. A retouch, I'm gonna do a virgin color first. And remember the virgin applicator for a lightener and the virgin applicator for a relaxer are exactly the same. The difference is for a um, relaxer and the lightener, the subsections going across, this is a section, subsections are what you slice through. And by the way, you need to wear gloves when you're working with color really should. Anyways, uh, so for a relaxer and a lightener, your subsections are one eighth inch. Oh my God, how do I know what one eighth inch is? I don't know what one eighth inch, do I need to get a ruler? Do I need to take, nope, it's right here. One eighth, that's your tip. 
Okay? One fourth is just a little bit further up on the tip. So measure this to your ruler if you want to. And this tells you a half inch is right here. Fourth inch is there. Eighth inch is here. So there's your clue. You don't need to, you know, be guessing. You've got a pretty good idea what your subsections. After you do it for a while, yes, you, you already see it. And by the way, if any of you are doing clipper cutting, these are the best for cleaning your clippers. Absolute best for making sure that all those little hairs, my ring is a little bit stuck and my gloves are tight. Uh, it's poking me. Anyways, um, so know that that's your points of measure on this, on the brush that you can just use. And you can tell that I've used it, and I use it many times to section off, because this is a little bit stained, and it will get stained. It's been sanitized, but, uh, you know, that's just stained. It's, it, uh, it's white, white grabs, but it lets go. That's why it's lighter and letting go. Things you're going to learn when we talk about the theory of color. All right, so then you're going to need a color bowl. Your color bowls on the inside have numbers, all right? You, you, uh, you may not be able to see it, but it's got um, two ounces. Let me see. Let me fix my glasses here. Yeah, two ounces, four ounces, and six ounces. And that goes back to after a while you know. All you really need on a retouch all over is two ounces of color and your developer, which I've already got here. This is 20 volume. I set them up in little uh, squares so that we can. I don't have the full bottle over here. So I know I've got 20 volume in there, and this is what I'm going to use. And I've got two ounces in there as well. So that would then make it four ounces in the bowl. You always want to put your color in first because the color comes out like spaghetti strings, fat ones, noodles, I guess. So when that happens, and I'm only using one color. Remember, you're learning application. I'm going with a virgin lightener. This is not necessarily a lightener. All right, this is a very, very light color, but is not, a, in other words, a bleach or a lightener. That's what we call in the salon, a lightener is bleach. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to measure it out to two, uh, I want two little squares. See, these lines are ounces. So by these little lines, look at your tube. These are ounces. So I'm going to squeeze it out to the second one. And before I put my, okay, let me make sure I'm correct here. There you go. And you'll see that that is about and always put the lid back on. Hydrogen peroxide, which is what we use to mix this together for the chemical reaction, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. What is H2O? Water. What is O? Oxygen. Two hydrogen, two oxygen. You put, you add oxygen to this, it starts what's called oxidation. In other words, it starts changing. It'll get dark. So make sure your lid is tight. Always put your lid on it. If you want to take this out, you just turn it back the other way. You can use it for another tube. Right now, I'm just going to kind of leave it in there to keep it in a safe place, but these are fantastic to work. Another thing you could think about using, surprisingly, if you don't have one, put your duck bill, and it's, you got to hold it really, really tight to get it to, to turn. Pull it all the way in, and it will turn for you, but it's a lot of work. So it's best to get the, the little tubes, uh, the applicators to work with, or just squeeze from this side and keep turning it or folding it, all right? So that's how you take that out. You're gonna use the maximum. You're not throwing money away, in other words, when you do this. All right, so then I'm gonna get my tint brush. I wanna take this. See, if I put the developer in there, I'd have a bunch of little bumps. So I want to turn it around. I want to smooth it first. So I'm smoothing this. And by the way, if you want to know, if you don't know what certain colors are or what their tone is, you know, it's sometimes they're given names instead of tones. And you don't know what those names mean. Cedar block. What does that mean? Does that mean red brown or red white or what? Cedar block. That's two different tones. Um, so um, you put it... Uh, 
a little bit of this color just on a white piece of paper, give it a few hours and you'll see the tone of that color show up within that. So uh, anyways, that's a little clue for you. So I'm gonna take uh, two ounces of this 20 volume that I've got. Okay, this is the one I opened. And I'm gonna pour it in there. All right, and I'm looking at it. And yeah, it's right at the four ounce mark. I mean, just slightly halfway. Now it will mix nicely. I don't have those little strings in there trying to mix up. So the thing about a virgin application, you want to start away from the scalp. The reason you start away from the scalp is because everybody's scalp, and remember mannequins don't have heat, but everybody has a natural heat to their scalp. When you decide to do this, you're going to take the section, the section off. Now I know how far I need to go. So I'm going to insert my brush, wipe. I want a dirty end. I want a clean end. This keeps it, if I were to just do this, the likelihood of it dripping on stuff becomes extreme. Clean it. Always wipe your brush. This is the side with the product. This is all going to control, also going to control your product. So I wipe the other side because what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this section out. Now, I'm going to apply from about an inch away to about an inch and a half away to two inches from the ends. The reason for that is because of the natural heat. Heat makes color come up faster, happen faster. So when we mix a chemical in there and you've got that natural heat, it's going to work faster. Now the ends, because they're the weakest, all right, that's why you don't apply to the ends all the time. So once this lifts where you can see that the color has lifted, then you would bring it and apply it to the scalp and the ends. So your practice and your procedure becomes important because what if you're really slow and you're over here and you've got to run back here and then you've got to bring that to the scalp and then you've got to run back over here and you haven't started that yet. So proficiency and efficiency is extreme. You've got to move fast when you apply. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know where you're at. Another factor is color has no brains. People are surprised about that. There are no brains in color. When I put the color on the mid shaft or the belly of this, and it's, we call it the mid shaft, the middle part of that hair strand, I'm going to lean it over to the other side. Some people start from the bottom, but then you're, you know, it becomes a problem because the other hair keeps coming down and then you're having to pin the hair up. And so it's much easier for me to take a piece of foil, bring it over, attach the foil now I'm protecting the other hair see so when I apply this product on the mid shaft and I'm only taking a fourth inch just a little bit let me bring the color over here so I'm not having to reach and I'm just using color remember I'm not using lightener but we're doing the lightener procedure. So we just want an eighth of an inch. So what is that? Very, very skinny. All right. So just along the mid shaft, and then I'm going to lay it on my hand and make sure that it's only on the middle of the hair. See that? It's not on the scalp and it's not on the ends. Then I lay it over. See, when this hair lays over, if I didn't have that foil on there, Again, the product has no brains. It would start working on that hair that it's laying on as well. We don't want it to do that. So another eighth of an inch. And again, I wipe the back clean, dirty. You use your dirty side and then you lay it on your hand. That's why you have to wear gloves, especially if you're using lightener. Your hands are gonna burn like crazy. And there I lay that over. Now you wanna leave a little bit of a gap you want to leave an air gap right there. You want to kind of loop it over. And it gets a little harder to loop over as you do this. So this is the Virgin Lightener application. You want to stay a couple inches away from the scalp. Make sure you get the front and the back. 
And then as you go down, it's going to get just a little bit more difficult because we're getting wider. All right. So I'm going to bring this up. Remember, you're learning procedure. So I would do this with all of it, okay? Then I place my, there, see how it loops it? So I have my, the end of my um, <clears throat> tint brush doing that for me. So this is getting wider. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna separate it into two areas because this is a wide area. So I'm going to now get half of it. And come up. And do you see you just have to work fast and it's just boom, boom, boom. One step, next step, move forward. Oh no, I got some color on there. That's, where's, there it is, okay. Um, it doesn't matter because it's just a mannequin, but still you have to be careful about that. Maybe I didn't want that color on there again. Take that and loop it. What it's doing now is the hair is sticking to each other in that area. Uh, where I would have to be careful would be on this hair. I don't want it to land on it. So maybe I would move the foil over a little bit. So again, I'm just gonna take a little bit section here just to show you as we do it. Take it, oops to the back. Make sure you get both sides because uh, sometimes when people do lighteners, they go back to check it and they see some yellow and they see some orange. What happened where it's orange, they didn't cover it enough. So some t that's why you do the front and the back and that's why your sections need to be so thin. Because once I put it up here and I put it back here, what about that hair in the middle? That's the why it needs to be 1 8 inch subsections for lightener. So see, I'm pressing it down, I'm pressing it down. You see that brush, press it down. I bring it up, I'm pressing it down. Then I'm gonna put my, okay? So let's say now we're gonna, we're done. We've taken it all the way down. I'm teaching you procedure. And, and now you know on the wider area, okay, I would just maybe do this middle area and then do the sides um, as you go down. And then it becomes narrow again. And you can see that it's kind of sticking to itself right there. It's helping it hold itself up. So once I'm all the way down, on the lightener procedure. And remember, this is the exact same procedure that you would do on a relaxer retouch mid shaft. Okay, so I've taken it all up. All, everything is up, everything is done. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve this out, the section that I did, and then I'm going to then take, see, we're gonna pretend that this has got got it all over. We've started at the perimeter line at the nape and we're starting to bring it down. You want to keep those separations. Okay, you want to keep that hair separated so you want to bump it out just a bit. Okay, and then just bump it out just a bit. You see how that's elevated away from the scalp. We're not pushing it into the scalp or slapping it in there. We're bumping it out a bit. There you go. And I would have started from the nape and you can almost see those little sections that I took. You can almost see those carvings out. That's what you want. You want that hair to breathe and you want the rest of the hair to uh, continue being processed. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the procedure. This is a mannequin, so she's not gonna complain. I'll finish her up later. And in a little bit, I'll show you how to take it back to the scalp and bring it all the way out on that one. So now we're gonna do a retouch. Okay, so the retouch is only on the hair that's grown out. She's gotten it lighter, she's gotten it darker, whatever. Uh, if it's darker, you just bring it all the way out to the ends, by the way, and I'll show you that in a minute, how to do a just a, a tint going darker. So anyways, um, you're gonna take this again, same thing, but this is now a retouch where it's grown out. All right, so this becomes right there. That's where the hair has grown out. Now look at where I'm folding it now. You see, 
All right, so I'm going to then, same thing, only at the scalp, both sides. This time, put your loop up a little higher. And this is how you do a retouch. It's only at the scalp. We call it the line of demarcation. Let's pretend this is black and this is gray. We only take it to that line where the black is at. You're not going to take it above that. You don't have to. You're not going to take it below it. You want to take it right up to it so that it kind of attaches to it. So you can see that this is a retouch application. Again, you can see the separations and we do it all the way down to the gin, the nape, perimeter line, and I want to show you as well how to keep it from, um, and just remember to wipe your brush. See, I've got my clean side. It's my dirty side that I'm working on. So you can see how much faster you can get with this as long as you um, mind your application. And if once you know where you're at, and again, we would have taken it all the way down. Now, when you start coming down, it does want to flip down a bit. Sometimes, again, what people do with a retouch, they start from the bottom. But this is the problem with that for me. Start from the bottom. And then they're going to clip the hair up. All right? Then they're going to do the retouch down here. All right, so we're doing the retouch application. And I'm, I mean, you know, I'm not going to clip it all the way down to the perimeter line. That's just like way too short. But I would pick this up and just work it along the retouch. And you can see that that's separating all by itself with the color by itself. <clears throat> all right. Now, I've got to move up, right? So then I would undo that, hold that down, clip it back up, and then apply Again, you'd have to be fast at it, and only at the new growth is what we call it, that new hair coming out, and you notice I just made it easier. I used my clip to do that. Two minutes. All right, so what I'm going to do, and so you see that this is a little bit, you know, because of having to open and close this thing. So when you bring this down, you want to, again, loop it out so that it separates it. So you have both methods. You can start from the top and go down, or you can start from the bottom and go up. Okay, students, I still need to show you the tint um, going darker. So we've got our 30 minutes up, so we need to put another up. We'll be right back is what I'm saying, all right? So I'll just see you in just a little minute.